So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. All together, all together, love. All together, all together, worth. You're worthy, love. All together, wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. I'll never know. I'll never know how much it costs to see my upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely. All together worthy, love. all together wonderful to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody may be wondering why we praise God the way we do, why we lift up hands to God. It's because when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, we have to say, thank you. We have to say, we praise you. We have to say, Hallelujah! Oh. You know, when we praise like this, you may have come in here dragging. You may have come in here, you've had a long week, it's been a long work week for you, but when praises go up, blessings come down. And God will give you a refreshing. 
God will give you a new anointing. I just believe if you got pain in your body, when the saints pray, because we serve a God who is Jehovah Rapha, if you just praise God, sometime that malady will turn into a melody. Hallelujah. So here we are to praise God, to worship God. And we thank God for all that he does on our behalf. Amen. Good morning, True Light. And good morning to all of those who are with us by way of the internet. We are thankful that you have come to join us in this worship experience. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Our God is awesome and worthy to be praised. Amen? Praise God. True Light, I am thankful to you. Uh, this month has been a very hectic month. Amen. As a matter of fact, the last six weeks have been moving. Amen. We, we have gone to PA and worship with our sister church. Amen. There, praise God. Two weeks later, we were at Deliverance. Amen. A week after that, we were over at Freedom. And you have been there. You don't know how much it means to your pastor that you show up and that you just don't show up, but you are excited about the, the journey and what God is doing in the life of this church. Amen. Amen. And so for that, I am thankful. Amen. <clears throat> I know this is Pastor Appreciation Month, but Appreciation is, is shown in more than just cards and, and gifts and certificates. When you show that you love God, when you let your light shine, that's appreciation. Amen. Because God will do some things for you when you just put him first. Amen. And so we're thankful for this month. We are thankful for the opportunity to whom much is given, much is required. Amen. So thank you, True Light, for your obedience and for your steadfastness. Amen. I believe somebody read the verse, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season. Somebody asked the question, what is due season? Sometimes it don't seem like it comes fast enough. Amen. But the Lord said in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. In other words, don't throw in the towel. Amen. If you find yourself at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy. I wish I had a witness in the house. We'll come in the morning. Hallelujah. And so I just came by here on my way to heaven to tell you that our God has not ceased to be good. He is good all the time. And all the time he is good. Amen? Well, praise God. I, you sound like you're ready for the word. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for our minister of music. Amen. Um, praise God for him. <laughs> Thank God for our drummer, TD. <laughs> Who's quiet but, but carries a big stick. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God for both of them. Amen. Praise God. With your Bibles in your hand then. 
I just want to read one verse in your hearing. Amen. And then we will talk about that particular verse. Amen. It's found in the book of Ecclesiastes, very familiar passage of scripture, the third chapter. I just want to read in your hearing verse one. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. Praise God. Are you there? To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Repeat that after me. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to our God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to talk to you just for a few precious moments from the subject changing seasons. Changing seasons. Some people don't think that God is the creator of the universe. You have people who are atheistic who don't believe in God at all. You have some people who are agnostics, who don't believe there's enough proof that there is a God. There are all kinds of ideologies and philosophies that have inundated our world. But there are seasons. And one of the reasons why I know that God exists is because when we look at the seasons, there is order in the universe. Amen? Uh, spring always proceeds winter. Summer always proceeds spring. And fall always proceeds summer. And this cycle has been going on ever since time began. I cannot believe in a Big Bang Theory. <clears throat> I can't believe in a missing gap. I cannot believe in any other uh, theology or philosophy that does not posit that God is the creator of the universe. Because if God is not the creator of the universe, then why do we have order in the season? Amen. I know God is real, and thankfully we live in Ohio, and I know sometimes Ohio gets a bad rep. Amen. Some people don't believe the sun shines in Ohio. Amen. But this time of year is one of those times of year when Ohio shines bright. Amen. As a matter of fact, fall is my favorite time of year. Because right now, the leaves are starting to change. And color is inundating God's landscape. Amen. I, I just get amazed that just a few months ago, all the leaves were green. Amen. But now, we're starting to see gold and red and yellow and all of these colors, and it tells me that, that God is a colorful God. Can you say that with me? God is a colorful God. Praise God. Autumn leaf color is a phenomenon that affects the normal green leaves of many deciduous trees and shrubs by which they take on. During a few weeks in the autumn season, various shades of red, yellow, purple, black, blue, orange, magenta, and brown inundate the season. There are three things that we learn about autumn. 
Praise God. Number one, we learn that autumn refreshes us with new wonder. Amen? In autumn, the creativity of God hollers out. Look at these things. Autumn reminds us that there's a world of wonder. Aren't you glad that, that, that you see all of these various colors this time of year? Amen. God created color. And one of the things that uh, we were talking about in the Sunday school uh, hour today is that uh, man has a tendency to put his own twist on colors. And if you're not careful, you will get caught up in the labeling of color. Amen. As a matter of fact, I think America is in trouble because of all of the labeling that goes on. Amen. Uh, God made all colors. And evidently, all colors are beautiful to God. You say, well, how do you know that all colors are beautiful to God? Because he inundates the world with so many beautiful and elaborate colors. He must have wanted us to know that they were all beautiful in his sight. Amen. So I like diversity. I like various colors. Amen. And I don't put any stigma on any particular color. Amen. One of the things that I found out, uh, Minister Jamar, in the Bible is that God never associates color with people. There's nowhere in the Bible where you hear God calling somebody a white man or a black man or a red man or a yellow man. We were all made in the image and likeness of God. And so whatever colors God gave us, it, it was because he loved color and evidently it is pleasing in his sight. Color hollers out, look at me. Hallelujah. And I, for one, am glad of the various colors. I, when, when I would go uh, to Belden, to the uh, prison, uh, going up 77, uh, during this time of year, you could see just so many colors and the trees would just be adorning the expressway. And it was just such a beautiful picture. Going up to Lake Erie, amen. Seeing all of the various colors, it just... It's exciting. Amen. So autumn refreshes us with new wonder. I'm amazed at how many colors we see this time of year. Amen. Secondly, autumn reminds us of the promise of glory. The promise of glory. My parents' leaves are starting to change. My leaf is starting to change too. I, that went over somebody's head, but there's some color on your head, amen. And, and the color that's on your head may not be the color it used to be. Amen. And, and, and people, you know, they like to look at gray and they think, well, you know, uh, Must be getting old. Matter of fact, my kids tell me I'm over the hill. I say, well, where are your grandparents? And then I tell them, just stay in line. You'll get there. It's kind of like going to Cedar Point. Amen. If you, if you want to ride the roller coaster, just get in line. Amen. At some point, your ride will come. Amen. Unless, unless you're like my wife, who could be in line, but she ain't intending to ride. <laughs> Praise God. My parents' leaves are starting to change. Their color is silver rather than red. The glory is still the same. They may not have quite the same speed. Oh, my goodness. Okay, y'all going to loosen up on me. 
Now see, you know, you can't run like you used to. Amen. Some of you all, <clears throat> praise God, used to go downtown and go up those steps. I said used to. Now you just look at them. <laughs> praise God. I got on the track yesterday. Hey Amen. Over at over at Glen Oak. And I, I thought I would walk around the track. And there was a lot of people over there. And so I, I, I started with good intention. Halfway around, Russell, I said, you know, I don't have to do it all today. Praise God. The leaves are changing. Amen. Amen. The glory is still the same. They, they may not have quite the same speed, but they have wisdom and grace and decades of joy that shine in their faces. They're taking on the beauty of autumn, showing dimensions of glory that my green summer self doesn't display. Amen. One of the things I love about older people, and I like to hang around older people, is because you don't get old being a fool. <laughs> Praise God. And, and if, you, if you talk to them, they will, they will navigate you around some things that you shouldn't have to suffer. Amen. Or to listen to, just, just hang around some people who have some wisdom. You know, uh, they've been here for a while. It's kind of like I have to tell my kids, you know, you haven't been 65, but I've been your age. And if you just listen, amen, you don't have to redo the same things that I went through. As a matter of fact, I believe that every generation ought to stand on the shoulders of the previous generation. Amen. We are here to help our kids. Amen. To become fluent and successful. Amen. I, I intend for my grandkids to be better than my kids. Amen. I'm praying for my grandkids right now. God, make, make them of such character that they change the world. Amen. I believe we all have that potential. Amen. Okay, y'all don't even look like y'all's graduation picture. Go get your high school book and, and, and look at what you used to look like. Hey Amen. I heard somebody say Jerry Curl. You? Afro puffs. Hey Amen. I had a fro that was so big that Dr. J, would, he would admire it. Amen. That was a few days ago. Amen. I'm just glad it's still growing. Amen. Autumn reminds us of the promise of glory. Thirdly, autumn prepares us for winter's coming. Amen. I told you that I, I enjoy autumn. I love autumn, but it also reminds me that the snow is coming. Amen? Winter is coming. Inevitably, autumn's beauty and wonder fades into winter's chilled silence. Autumn doesn't stay. It fades and falls away, just like the leaves on the trees. Autumn reminds us that our leaves, too, will die. The curse we inherited from our father, Adam, means we have our seasons and then we go. Winter takes us all. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, winter is coming. We need to be reminded of this because we didn't come here to stay. Amen. 
I don't care how long you've been here. Deborah and I were thinking about how long we've been in Canton. We've been here for 25 years, almost more time than I was in my own home city. Amen. But we're not here to stay. We're not, nobody is here to stay. Amen. We need to be preparing for winter. Amen. And you say, well, why, why, why are you telling me this? Because, because your victory is not over here. Your rewards are not over here. And so you got to understand that even though autumn is here, winter is coming. Dr. David Jeremiah shares uh, from his article, Reflections of Autumn, and he says the seasons come and go. So focus on the God who remains unchanged and unchanging. Aren't you glad that in a changing world we serve a changeless God? Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Doesn't matter what season you're in, God is still God. Hallelujah. And God is watching over us. What I love about it is that God... He, all of our days are written in his book. Let me just tell you parenthetically that, that, that there is nothing that is happening in your life that God hasn't already seen. Hallelujah. When you pray, God does not go try to find an answer for you. God has already placed your answers in your journey. God is waiting for you to get where you're supposed to be so that the blessings he has already put in your path will overtake you. We have a tendency to say we're waiting on God. Nothing could be further from the truth. God is not behind you. God is in front of you. God is not reactive. God is proactive. Amen. God has already gone before us to make sure that everything we need he is already prepared. Hallelujah. It's one of the reasons why I love the 23rd Psalm. Sometimes God got to make us lie down. Sometimes we don't have sense enough to lie down. And then we try to lie in wrong places. He makes sure that the place we lie down is green pastures. He leads us bes beside still. Waters. You ever tried to get a drink from a fast flowing stream? Or you ever gone to a fountain and the water just hit you in the face and because it came out too fast? God will allow you to go to still water so you can get a refreshing. Hallelujah. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our, our enemies can't even bother us from eating. God will make them sit down and watch you eat. Amen. He anoints our head with oil. Our cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us. How long? Through all of the seasons. Hallelujah. Our changeless God who never changes, he's going to be right there with you. Doesn't matter whether it's spring, summer, fall, or winter. God is still God. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful that God knows where I am. There's a lot of unwelcome change in this world. Moral and societal changes bother us most when we turn our television or a glance at magazine. But amid all of the changes, one thing, one person never changes. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You know you can enjoy God's fellowship, doesn't matter what season you're in. Aren't you glad about that? 
You know, our parents, they tried to teach us that. They say they told us that just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Even our little kids, you know, uh, they, we, don't, we don't go through what they're going through. Amen. I, as a matter of fact, today, I, I'm glad I'm not growing up in the age that we are today. Amen. I, I'm glad that I grew up in a time where it took a village to raise kids. Amen. And in the spring of my life, there were people that God had put in place. I called them neighbors. Amen. That had the duty to be our parents' eye when our parents were at work. Praise God. And they helped us to be the people we are today. Think about it, that mother down the street hadn't whooped your butt. Oh, y'all might as well fess up, you know, and you didn't want it to get back home because you got it again. Amen. I know that in, in, in the courts there's not double jeopardy, but it was double jeopardy in the time we grew up in. Amen. If it happened outside and it got back home, you were going to get killed again. Amen. And so we, we lived in a season where God allowed people to help us in our journey. Amen. The Bible says, train a child when he is young. Guess what you don't see in churches today? You don't see many young folk. You know why? Because parents are not training their kids. Don't blame the kids. They didn't even ask to come here. Hey Amen. They, 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 you know, kids, your kids are probably like you. Don't try to kill your kids for what you are. They reflect you. There are many me's, there are many you's. Hey Amen. That's, that's why, you know, you need to train them in the way they do, in the spring of their life. Hey Amen. You need to teach them that there's no voting in the springtime. Because if there's voting in the springtime, there'll be fallouts in autumn. Oh my goodness. I I'm talking about there's a time and a season for everything. Amen? Uh, his children, God's children will enjoy his fellowship right now and in the future. Amen. I, I love that, that, that the autumn times of my life, God talks to me, he walks with me, he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there is like none other hath known. And then God tells me that, that, that I'll be with you always. Yeah. Amen. Even, even, you know, people today, I, I watched my father. And you all, many of you all know I eulogized my father a few weeks ago. He had started to have a touch of dementia. He started to act in ways that I was not used to. I had to be reminded of the fact that God says that you're not keeping yourself. That God loves us so much until even when we can't keep ourselves, God will keep us. Hallelujah. I believe there's a passage of scripture that says, and now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. That means that even when I came, I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know where I'm going, but God holds me in his hands. Aren't you glad about that? I'm, th I'm thinking now about 
when I was, when my kids were little, and we would come to busy intersections, amen. And in order to get across, I had to make sure that they were safe. I never allowed them to hold my hand. You know why? Because if they held my hand, they could turn it loose. I held their hand. Amen. Because even when they were wiggling and squirming, I had them in my hand. Why? Because I knew the danger of the intersection. God knows the dangers in our season. And he holds us with his righteous right hand. And he's able to keep us from falling. Amen. God loves color. That's how I started this. Amen. I was, I was reading something. I hope you don't mind. I was reading a magazine article that was entitled African Soul Talk. When politics are not enough. Praise God. And I'm just going to share this. And for those of you who... Um, well, I'm just going to share this. Amen. A despondent son wrote this. He said, why did you make me black, Lord? Why did you make someone the world would hold back? Black is the color of dirty clothes, of grimy hands and feet. Black is the color of darkness, of tired, beaten streets. Why did you give me thick lips, a broad nose and kinky hair? Why did you create someone who receives the hated stare? Black is the color of the bruised eye when someone gets hurt. Black is the color of darkness. Black is the color of dirt. Why is my bone structure so thick, my hips and cheeks so high? Why are my eyes brown and not the color of the sky? Why do people think I'm useless? How come I feel so used? Why do people see my skin and think I should be abused? Lord, I just don't understand. What is it about my skin? Why is it some people want to hate me and not know the person within? Black is what people are labeled when others want to keep them away. Black is the color of shadows cast. Black is the end of the day. Lord, you know my own people mistreat me. And you know this just ain't right. They don't like my hair. They don't like my skin. As they say, I'm too dark or too light, Lord. You don't think it's time to make a change. Why don't you redo creation and make everyone the same? Then God speaks back. Why did I make you black? I made you the color of coal from which beautiful diamonds are formed. I made you in the color of oil, the black gold, which keeps people warm. Your color is the same as the rich, dark soil that grows the food you need. Your color is the same as a black stallion and panther. Oh, what majestic creatures indeed. All colors of the heavenly rainbow can be found throughout every nation. When all these colors are blended, you become my greatest creation. Your hair is the texture of lamb's wool. Such a beautiful creature is he. I am the shepherd who watches them. I will always watch over thee. You are the color of the midnight sky. I put star glitter in your eyes. There's a beautiful smile hidden behind your pain. That's why your cheeks are so high. You are the color of dark clouds from the hurricanes I create in September. I made your lips so full and thick so when you kiss, they will remember. Your stature is strong, your bone structure thick to withstand the burden of time. The reflection you see in the mirror, that image that looks back, that's mine. So get off your knees, look in the mirror and tell me what you see. I didn't make you in the image of darkness, I made you in the image of me.
You see, God made all the colors. And I love autumn because as I was reading the message of Ecclesiastes, it says that to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And so when I look at autumn, and as I enjoy the colors that I see today, I remember three things that you should remember as well. Autumn refreshes us with new wonder. Autumn reminds us of the promise of glory. And autumn prepares us for winter's coming. And what I love about it is that our God loves us so much until he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God loves you because he loves you because he loves you. And that's all I got because if, he, if we had to explain God's love, we wouldn't have the adjectives to express the love of God. But he loves everyone and he loves you just the same. And so this morning, in whatever season you're in, and I always tell people, if you're 30 and you only got two more years to live, you're in winter. If you're 50 and you got 40 years to live, you might be in spring. You see, it depends on where you are and how much time you got. Amen? Whereas we know not what shall be on the next day. For what is our life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. What season are you in? Whatever season you find yourself, just know that there is a God who is smiling your way. Amen? Everybody standing on your feet. Changing times, changing seasons, and yet God loves you. He offers to you the invitation that you don't have to worry about autumn because God is also the God of winter. And God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son that if you could just reach out by faith and believe him, God will make your tomorrows brighter than your yesterdays. God will mold you and shape you into something beautiful. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become you. All you've got to do this morning is just step out. There are people that either door, if you just step in one direction, they'll make sure, amen, to let you know what it takes to be a follower of Jesus. If you are here, amen, and you don't have a church home, True Light is a great place to be, amen. If you're here and you you just say, preacher, you know, I just need prayer. I just need somebody to, to just touch and agree with me. I will tell you that God knows where you are. He knows what season you're in. You see this cross over here? I invite you to come up here, write down your cares, write down whatever your anguishes are, and nail them to the cross. Nobody will see them but God. Amen. At the very end of the year, you know what we do? We take all of them down and burn them because Jesus was hung up for your hang-ups. Amen? He loves you. And he doesn't want you to come and leave like you came. So I invite you to come up and write your cares and put them on this cross. Amen. And I, I, I will pray for you because I just believe that the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Hallelujah. Well, this is your time. This is your season. 
Why don't you come? Praise God.